everybody, Ken Cam here. Just wanted to do a build update for my Strider. Some new developments have occurred and you might notice that I'm missing some things on this machine already and look at this, this is all detached. So there are a few things that we're gonna be doing here. One of them is, I had been working on this machine and flying it and I like it very much. And I realized that if I rework these 3D printed parts just slightly, I could detach the entire ProSite setup as one piece, which is pretty convenient. The only connector you need to remove when you do that, ignore the fact that this is disconnected, this goes to the camera. The only connector you need to remove to take up this take off this whole thing is the is the power connector. So you just you can get to it right through here and you can just disconnect the power connector, slide it out and the whole top can come off, which leaves you with the bottom piece that has your motors and your uh, speed controls and your and your flight controller and it makes it very easy to work on and I talked with anomaly drones about this and they said hey we this is a good idea we can we can make some improvements here and this is what they came up with this is a one piece top mount instead of a three piece top mount so the traditional setup or the original setup had this bottom part here in the back which also had a receiver tray, which I disconnected that part. I cut the receiver tray out. It was just a flat piece connecting these two parts, and I'll explain why I did that in a second. But that was the first piece. This top piece that held the uh, video transmitter was the, the second piece, and the camera mount was the third piece. And Anomaly Drones came up with a one-piece solution that holds the camera in the front, it holds the video transmitter in the middle, holds the antennas at the back, and they inverted the wire holders right here so you can coil up your video transmitter uh, or I'm sorry your antenna wires right there so you can build when you build it you can build the whole top part right into this new piece as one unit and then when you're done just assemble it down onto the frame which is genius and this is pretty cool they took my suggestion to make angled antenna mounts so now we've got a little angled receptacle for the antenna which puts the antennas at 45 degrees and they even thought about the forward tilt so that's that's great I think well I know from antenna theory that when we're dealing with diversity you really want to have your antennas at different angles so the original setup with having the antennas both vertical is not ideal it it does work because our our systems are pretty robust so we pretty we get pretty good signal but if you have a if you have your transmitter antenna vertical and you have these horizontal. Theoretically, if the antennas were perfect, you'd have zero signal. That doesn't happen in reality because you get a lot of multipathing, and so you end up with a situation where what you'll do is you'll you'll fall into an RSSI situation where it's a little bit lower than you'd like, and you could get a fail safe. If you put these at 90 degrees relative to each other, notice that's how the ProSite antenna is. This is at 90 degrees to that. If you put these in a V, they're at 90 degrees to each other, and that's what you want for polarization diversity. So now I'm babbling, so I'll stop. But suffice it to say, I'm going to rebuild my Strider with this new piece and show you how it looks when I get it all put together. But it's a really nice, clean, elegant solution, and it shows that Anomaly Drones is really listening to their customers and, and really continuing to innovate. Now, there's another little sneaky thing I'm going to do with my Strider, and that is, this is a little bit of a mess to look at at the moment, but I've got myself a 4-in-1 ESC here, and here's my KISS flight controller, and I was just playing around with the stack up and how everything was going to connect, but look at the connection here between the flight controller and the 4-in-1 ESC. It's just, a, it's just a single harness. Just one connector goes from the KISS flight controller to the ESC, and that's all the signal wires and a ground. So you don't have to have all these solder connections on the top of the board and on the bottom of the board. Talk about it, super simple, right? So this thing will just sit on the frame, like whoop, nope, like this. So the Kiss ESC arrow is facing forward, and 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 the motor wires then instead of being in the pods before the the motor wires came through that hole and went to the pods underneath, it came, popped up through this hole and came over to the to the flight controller and power distribution board. Now the power distribution board is gone, and the motor wires will just extend all the way across the arms and connect right to the ESCs. And I've got some of this cable loom here. This is that expandable braided sleeving that I got on Amazon. This is the eighth inch version and it's black. But you can get different colors and I'm gonna use this to channel the motor wires through and then I'm gonna, I might get a little bit, might have to get a little bit clever on how I'm gonna keep the wire from 
you know, flopping around here. I might have to put a couple of zip ties around here, but I don't know, I don't have anything to show you yet, but I can tell you that Anomaly Drones is also working on solutions to implement this 4-in-1 ESC specifically. So you'll see that coming up in a future video. Well, I've installed the ProSight system into the new top mount, and I've even shortened my antenna wires. As some people have uh, shown in various YouTube videos, you can shorten the ProSight antenna wires so that they are not so long and don't need to be coiled up here. Now, this is just something I wanted to try. Coiling up the antenna wires on the Strider is super easy because Anomaly Drones provided these little wire holders, these little antenna wire holders, and you can coil up the antenna wires in there very neatly and it's not really a problem. But I just wanted to try desoldering and resoldering my own antenna wires. I will say I'm not sure I'm going to continue to do this in the future. I'm going to try this and see how it works out, but the solder connections at this frequency are very critical. This is 5.8 gigahertz. I work in the RF industry and I know that the transitions from wire to micro strip here are very critical and if you don't get the solder joints done correctly you're, you will kill your viswar or some people call it swar, SWR, standing wave ratio. Basically you don't get as much power into the antenna and therefore not as much power into the air. So when I was reworking these solder joints, I mean, I have a lot of experience soldering. I pretty much know what I'm doing, and it was challenging. I mean, it's really tiny coax wire. This coax wire is tiny, and so if you don't do it right, if you don't strip it correctly and solder it on there correctly, you're not going to have a good result. And it took me a while to do it right. And even then, it's not as clean as it was from the factory. So I'm not sure I'm going to continue to shorten the antenna wires, but it is pretty nice to have antenna wires that aren't all coiled up. Uh, well, so we'll see how it goes. However, I do have the rest of the ProSight suite installed in here, and with the new top mount, it was super simple. I mean, camera bolts in, the transmitter just slides in there, just clips in, the antenna slides into the mount, and I gotta put my little screws in there. The little 45 degree antenna holders for the receiver. Everything is super easy to integrate, and I expect it to work very well. Now I am doing one thing that is not sanctioned, if you will, by Anomaly Drones, and that is I'm raising this up. These are 35 millimeter standoffs. The original ones are 28 millimeter. Now because I'm using this 4-in-1 ESC, it does require a little bit more height. And what I found with the Strider before when I assembled it was that the antenna connector for the ProSight in the front, I don't know if you can see it there, kind of underneath my thumb, it's very close to the standoff for the flight controller. And with the short mounts, that antenna connector, this one right here, was pretty close to the board. In fact, it was almost touching. And with this iteration of the Strider. This is a little this is becoming a little bit custom for me. I'm I'm raising this up and I know that that's going to going to make the battery further away from the center of gravity and it's going to reduce performance to some degree, but I want to try it because I want to try this 4-in-1 ESC on this model and I want to have plenty of clearance here for the flight controller and the speed control. And I even might try running a battery strap through here and trying a bottom mount battery. So I wanted to add a little bit of height. Now you're thinking, what about the carbon side plates? So here's one of the carbon side plates, original carbon side plates. And if I put this on here, well, geez, that's that's not going to reach. I just made the standoffs way too high. So what did I do? I made new ones. I fabricated these myself. And I, I just modeled them after the original design from Anomaly Drones. Not super easy to make your own carbon parts. I have some, some machine tools that make it easy for me. I use a bandsaw to cut them out, and I go from there. I use a file and some other tools, some hand tools basically, to get the carbon into the shape I want. And I use a set of calipers and some careful measurements to make sure that I get the size correct. So now, if I put my new side plates on, and I put my 35 millimeter standoffs in place, you can see and it all lines up for me. So that's my plan. I'm gonna have a little bit of a higher stack up height. And again, I know it's not ideal for a performance, but 
I want to try a few things with this machine and that will allow me to have a little bit more room to play with. Now with this 4-in-1 ESC, there are a couple other things I want to mention. Since your motor wires are going directly from here to the ESC, you do need to extend them in the case of some motors. These Lumineer motor wires are too short, so I had to extend them. And I thought I was going to use some of this stuff, but I, I decided I hate this stuff. I tried to put this over the motor wires, and it's doable. I mean, you can do it, but it's just a pain to work with it. It, it frays. You have to put heat shrink at either end of it. It's hard to get the motor wires through it. It's just, it, it would look super cool when I was done, but I was thinking every time I have a problem with a motor, I mean, I, I crash, you, you know, you break motors, you want to be able to replace the motor quickly, and this just adds time to the rework process. So I decided to use a plain piece of heat shrink tubing. Why not, right? It's, it's actually got a, enough rigidity that it'll hold the motor wire down. I could put a little zip tie right here between this hole or that hole and the edge. Just one zip tie here and then it's actually like rigid enough that it'll hold. I'm not even gonna shrink it. I'm just gonna leave it like that. And, and that way, if I damage a motor, I can just unsolder, slide this off, slide another one back on, throw a zip tie on there and I'll be done. I just think that's easier. Also, soft mounting motors is becoming a thing. And you guys may have seen some of the videos from Johnny FPV and Willard FPV about, oh my God, this works. I don't believe it. Some skeptics are saying, well, it's still bolted, bolted on. So how is, how is a few layers of electrical tape here? That's what they were using, electrical tape, going to provide vibration damping. And I just couldn't wait for Joshua Bardwell to attack this problem. And I knew he would. And sure enough, a few days later, he just posted a video today. Today's the 20th, I think. He actually used some double-sided tape, but showed that it actually does work. I was I was a little bit of a skeptic myself. I'm a mechanical engineer, and I know a thing or two about vibration damping and such. And I really was unsure. I know that a bolted interface can reduce vibration, but also can increase vibration depending on the resonant frequencies. And so it's not it's not a, a simple, intuitive answer. But Joshua Bardwell, sure enough, did get out black box, did a before and after test, and showed that it actually works. So I'm using some TPU or Ninja Tech Cheetah soft 3D printed pieces here that I had to put under the motors. I'm going to try it out. I actually have not had a vibration problem like that. In Josh, Joshua's video, he shows that his copter is kind of twitching and stuff, and it's got a yaw problem if you look at black box. I actually haven't had the problems, but I have had susceptibility of this transmitter. Prosite transmitters are known to be susceptible to vibration, and occasionally... I've had some video noise at full throttle. It's a known issue. And so your, your machine does need to be balanced well. You need to have motor bearings that are in good condition, motors that aren't bent, shafts that aren't bent, props that are high quality. You can't just throw the old Dow props on there and hope for the best. It's not going to work. So I put them in there. I mean, this is super easy. I mean, I have slightly longer screws. I put a piece of, a piece of material in there, bolt the motor down, use Loctite. Got to use Loctite because now you have a rubbery interface there. If you don't use Loctite, the motor screws are going to come out and then you're going to have a bad day. But why not, right? I'm just going to try it. Then if I get a crazy prop that's slightly out of whack or something, I didn't get a chance to replace a bearing right away and, and I want to continue flying, maybe this will help. You can't hurt. It was so easy to do that I just did it. Making some progress on the build now. I've figured out what I want to do with the stack up. I've actually used four millimeter I'm sorry, six millimeter spacers on the bottom and I think eight uh, on the top, six and eight, because I realized that when I put this thing together, I will have enough room with the taller standoffs here. And I soldered some power wires to the input battery wires here that I can use to power the flight controller and the video transmitter. And I haven't figured out exactly how I'm gonna do that wiring yet. I put the wires for the flight controller out of the top of the flight controller this time and I'm going to try to just sort of Y these together I think and then run them up to my little video transmitter connector. The receiver will just sit right there on the back of the frame with a little piece of adhesive tape and that's all it takes to secure that. I'll probably just tape the buzzer to the top of it or zip tie it or something and that'll be it. And I've got all my ProSight components installed in the upper part ready to go. And so once I get 
the basics of the wiring done here. I'll just bolt these two together and I'll be done. All right, everything's together and I've completed a test hover and it hovered. Uh, no obvious issues, so I guess it's ready to fly. I would go for a flight now, but the weather here is terrible. It's rainy and wet and cold. But I'm leaving for California tomorrow, and I'm hoping to fly it while I'm there. I'll be in the San Diego area, area actually the Carlsbad area of California. And I'm hoping to get some good flying in while I'm there and finally get some flight video of this guy. And I have performed a few modifications to it from its standard form, and I've used the updated top plate that I got from Anomaly Drones. And it looks good, and I can't wait to get it in the air. The one thing I added here was a strain relief, and this is a little bit of a, I don't know, kludge. I wanted to take the strain off of the wires going to the 4-in-1 ESC because they're just, they were just pads on a PC board, and they could rip right off. If I eject a battery, I bet you this, this whole lead would come with it. So I did what you see there is basically a zip tie, a little piece of heat shrink to, to protect the wires from getting cut by the, by the zip tie. And just tightened it as well as I could there so that if this gets pulled, it won't um, cause a problem. It won't cause those, those pads to pull off of that. The only other concern I have is these tiny little signal wires are just exposed right there. Um... It sort of is what it is. I mean, they're they're not sticking out, but they're tiny, tiny little wires. They could get damaged, I guess, with a random piece of debris or something. But I figure that's a pretty low chance of happening. Got my receiver wires. You can see I got my receiver stuck in there on the on the bottom. The buzzer is hot glued on top of it, just sitting there, and the receiver wires are just poking out a little bit at the top here. I might have to get longer tubes because really I should pull those out further, but those are the only tubes I have to work with right now. So a couple of things I do need to go back and update, and other than that, it's it should be totally flight worthy. I've got a few different types of props I'm going to try this time, but uh, I like these props pretty well. These are sort of the PC type, I guess. They're flexible, but they're they're pretty tough, and they have pretty good flight characteristics, almost as good as the glass fiber 543s that I've tried and I've been sticking a little piece of hot glue on top of the antenna here and that just helps to prevent it prevent that wire from getting damaged if you if you crash you land upside down the antenna scrapes um, this wire right here can can get scraped off right there and if you if you lose the shielding on that wire then you're in trouble uh, so hopefully the next report will be the flight we'll see how it goes stay tuned <laughs>